okay and uh, how to sign up for the free trial okay how to create your own account that is exactly what I've planned for today it may take uh, uh, 90 minutes to 120 in between so let's jump onto the very first slide now so what what did we cover so far is everything you need to know to get start with AWS that is we have covered the server hardware which was uh, a one day session uh, it's like uh, the uh, what is a server how is it different from the regular personal computers and the specifications of it or the um, the architecture of it or different form factors of the servers how will you manage remotely manage the servers or the firmware uh, importance of the firmware upgrades uh, or how will you do the server consolidation and all that stuff and then we've talked about uh, about networking it's like uh, it was a two two class uh, two classes we have done in the networking uh, that is to help very basics of physical networking those who have already taken the CCNA or hardware and networking that's covered here uh, storage basics uh, like I said it's from the ground level from the hard disk until the uh, protocol level like SAN, NAS, iSCSI uh, in between whatever is there is covered here in the storage basics including your RAID uh, including your uh, Protocols like SAN, NAS, uh, DAS, iSCSI, performance versus capacity, IVO versus throughput. So it's all covered in here. And then uh, Windows operating system administration is what we have covered uh, here, part of the operating system concepts. Virtualization concepts, because like I said, there is no cloud competing without virtualization and fundamentals of the uh, cloud. So what exactly the cloud, uh, the qualities or the characteristics of the cloud computing is what we have discussed so far. This is exactly you need to know to get started with AWS or with any other cloud computing. Well, this knowledge is required for uh, for freshers who never been into IT, no idea, uh, even the basics, uh, to whom it is a suit, uh, I mean, who, to whom this six modules are required and it is close to 14 hours of training and then what we're going to discuss uh, for the rest of the uh, you know for, for for rest of the course here is uh, the introduction class which is what we are doing today uh, and of course tomorrow as well and then uh, we will go over ec2 service uh, vpc s3 ebs identity and access management elb elastic load balancer auto scaling route 53 uh, database services here cloud formation which is a uh, which is an automation tool from Amazon. Uh, it's it's basically called as infrastructure as a code, right? You can uh, the services that you saw so far, including your EC2, VPC, S3, EBS, IAM. So all these things can be uh, can be implemented by manually going there and and doing right click or do something uh, uh, manually. The same thing can be uh, composed as a code and uh, you can redeploy the components again and again uh, you know using that code right so cloud formation is also contribute to the DevOps concepts so definitely we're gonna see the detailed uh, discussion about the cloud formation and there is something else called elastic bean stack so elastic bean stack is also uh, is also uh, something that falls into certified developer and DevOps as well so this is a platform as a service thing so it's readily available for you you just have to upload the code and start using it so we will do the uh, we will do examples in that area as well a uh, cloud watch is, is a monitoring tool a trusted advisor is also similar to the cloud watch but it it gives you the best practices and recommendations into uh, your account uh, uh, configuration best practices cost optimization uh, in all those areas sns sqs swf are uh, the distributed application environment components these are more into uh, the certified developer but still we will uh, cover a bit here and uh, we will do some practicals as well CloudFront is a CDN a content delivery network like I said there is a dedicated fast network connectivity between uh, between uh, all countries I mean major cities of all countries to the AWS data centers so that whenever you try to access any resource from Amazon data centers the access is very fast right because it is a dedicated fiber optic connectivity 
so I will explain you how the cloud how CloudFront can be opted. It's not just about the fast access. It is also about your uh, uh, catching the content locally and delivering the content uh, you know very fastly even without your request going to the servers. Uh, while it is catching the content locally, it makes sure that there is no con I mean no change at the source data or if the data is uh, is uh, protected data like it is only it should only be available to uh, the paid uh, or premium subscribers uh, that is all can be implemented using the cloud front and then with that uh, we cover most I mean all services that fall into your system certified solution architect and the certified solution sorry system operations administrator uh, we will get into architecting on AWS right we will I'll try to demonstrate how will you bring the high availability business continuity uh, backup things um, how will you distribute the load failure fail back so th that we will see a couple of examples in architecting AWS uh, by talking about them and then we do a live project of uh, uh, implementing a WordPress application uh, with a database connectivity to it and injecting uh, access control injecting um, uh, monitoring to it alerts to it right so everything put together we will try to do a live project uh, and then you will you will uh, you will I mean you will at least understand how exactly the project life cycle go on so with that said you you see you know these many services are covered uh, for the rest of the uh, course here and we being in the very first class that is introduction to it I would like to talk about I, I would like to talk about uh, uh, the other uh, things that I cover here part of the training is uh, the schedule details right approximately it is 35 hours of training uh, plus or minus two three hours uh, Every day it will be one 1.5 hour to two hours depending upon the topic for example if it is EC2 uh, we will theoretically discuss what EC2 is and uh, uh, AMIs Amazon machine images uh, and then the second day we will do the labs so first day it, it definitely takes one and a half hour and second day it may take one and a half hour or two hours depending upon the issues that we may face or uh, the interaction levels that you do because I give enough time for the questions and answers I just I just don't uh, uh, rush through or I don't skip anybody's questions okay uh, so uh, it, it's gonna be one and a half hour to two hours a day and five to six days a week normally it is five days and Saturday is a mutual understanding right so I propose to have a class on Saturday and if you are okay you can say yes or else we will skip it and we'll have classes on Monday and uh, if you are looking for something to read because you heard me in the classes that's fine but you still uh, looking for some kind of material yes you'll be provided with the student uh, manuals which are the PDF documents uh, on topic basis whatever the topics that you see on the screen you will get the PDF documents uh, per topic and then if you're looking for the lab assistance because yeah you heard me you saw me in the class uh, and you got something to read and if you're looking for something that will help you for the labs well uh, we will at least do five labs a topic five labs a topic and you'll be provided uh, with the lab guides okay with with the help of lab guides or the high level steps on what to do to achieve that particular lab so uh, you can use that as well and uh, if you are worried about your certification don't worry you will be provided with 500 sample questions uh, those 500 sample questions are targeting both solution architect and system operations administrator so uh, so using those 500 questions you can practice and I bet 60% of the questions will definitely come from these dumb files and the remaining 40% uh, of the questions uh, you may I mean you may follow me in the classes you may read through the product documentation uh, right so uh, you, and different other sources you can grab that 40 percent uh, okay and when we go to the certification path I'll tell you what how many questions will be there in the exam and uh, what should be the pass percentage and uh, I mean it's not just uh, all that I've got for you you are also covered in retake policy meaning uh, those who are attending the classes can attend the classes for the second time for free of cost and um, and 
I mean, don't take it on an official note, but I can, after providing all these, if you still feel that you cannot do it, I'll be able to help you with the certification. I have a, I mean, I, one of my friend is uh, uh, having a Prometric Center uh, in India. So I should be able to get your certifications done, no matter uh, which location are you uh, in, uh, you know, at, I mean, in this month or in the coming months. Uh, all levels of certification, including the associate level, professional level, DevOps, all certifications can be done no matter where you are. Uh, interviews, uh, my help will be there for you, even for the interviews. It's, it doesn't mean that I do the proxy calls, but I'll definitely help you crack your interviews. Okay, if you have any questions, you can feel free to call me or mail me so that I'll, we will fix an appointment and we will, uh, you know, talk about it. And job support, uh, I mean, as you all know that, <laughs> don't think that I'm going to provide you the job support, but yes, if you have any questions or anything like uh, any help needed once in a while, not on a regular basis, you can definitely shoot me a mail, I'll respond you back. But if you need a proxy interview help or if you need a job support, uh, there are a few guys I know who does it. Uh, definitely you still can reach me I'll I'll be able to uh, you know redirect you or I'll be able to point you to the you know exact contact so this is exactly the training program that you're gonna do for next uh, and f next uh, three to four weeks of time uh, and I'm, I'm any time if you have any questions to ask or any any uh, area that you feel should be extended feel free to propose uh, and uh, I'll definitely take your I mean, I'll take your point, right? And the other point that I would like to highlight here is it is not just one training program that we are doing. It's not a solution architect or it is not a system operations administrator. It is mix of it. After completing this training, you should be able to take uh, either of the certifications or both the certifications, okay? And uh, with that said, let's get into the AWS, uh, uh, you know, concepts and let's try to understand what exactly it is. Firstly, uh, AWS provides on-demand delivery of IT resources via the internet on a secure cloud service platform. It can offer you compute, storage, database, content delivery, internet of things, big data, analytics, whatnot. So uh, they have got a huge number of services in, in their catalog, in their portfolio. Okay, so uh, they provide IT services. Uh, Right. The IT, when I say IT services, it could be anything. It could be a server, it could be a database, it could be uh, the monitoring, the DNS service, it could be a desktop service, it could be analytics, right? Uh, Internet of Things, platform as a service. So any IT resource can be delivered over the internet in on demand and pay as you go, right? That is exactly uh, what uh, any public cloud provider does. So AWS. So AWS provides you IT resources via the internet, right? On uh, uh, on on demand. So if you guys know uh, the fundamentals of cloud computing, there you can understand uh, AWS is no different from any other public cloud provider because they must have to have those six qualities, the six characteristics of uh, the cloud computing, on demand rapid elasticity, wide network access or broad network access, self-service, right? So those six qualities, uh, you can put all those six qualities into into AWS and you can make a definition and that's exactly what AWS does. So for now, you can consider AWS provides uh, IT services on demand over the internet in pay-as-you-go model, right? And uh, when I say IT services, they have huge uh, list of services that falls into different categories as we are doing the solution architect and system operations administrator we are only focusing on infrastructure as a service delivery model okay and today Amazon Web Services provide a highly available uh, scalable low-cost infrastructure platform uh, in the cloud that is actually uh, you know serving in 190 countries on the globe at this point of time so how are they able to provide highly reliable, scalable, and low-cost infrastructure? Well, uh, because of their uh, global presence, because of their global uh, infrastructure, they have got many data centers, at least 16, uh, they have 43 data centers in 16 different countries. 
so if you are a company and you are uh, you would like to set up uh, IT on your own uh, at what at max what you can do is you can have a primary data center and you can have uh, another data center in a different city nearby you which is a near DR kind of thing a disaster recovery site and if you would like to have a far DR maybe in a different city in, a, in, the, in the same country or uh, a, a data center in a different city in a different country altogether then it's like you can have it but a lot of cost involved a lot of cost involved and you need to have teams hardware setup real estate it's a lot of uh, investment but if you opt to AWS data centers based on different uh, uh, different parameters you can choose to set up your application in different countries altogether so you, you have a choice of setting up your your application in 16 different countries uh, of 43 data centers okay it's your choice uh, point in that point that I'm trying to highlight here is you you have 16 different data centers uh, to to provide high availability or business continuity to a particular application if it is a traditional data center you may have only one data center or uh, two at max three data centers and it is it is not possible for you to scale uh, to an extent of having 43 data centers in 16 different countries right and since the beginning of uh, the AWS they have they have uh, introduced I mean they have released new services and features that's close to 1111 so since the beginning of since the introduction of AWS they have released 1111 new services and features uh, they have uh, introduced more than 40 new services and announced 48 price reductions so 48 price reductions are what uh, 2007 was the year they have uh, announced EC2 services which is a virtual server or a server in the cloud in Amazon data center so uh, since 2007 until now it's close to 10 years and it is 48 uh, times of price reduction so it is on an average five times a year is what the price is reduced right so reason that they keep reducing the prices is to make sure uh, this their services are available to every uh, I mean to to all kind of business uh, entities okay it's it's not like just only for the big multinational companies who can afford the price uh, but it is for every single company who are looking for the public cloud services right so that's the reason they've reduced the prices 48 times over the period of 10 years and then uh, about six months back they have over 1 million active customers across 190 countries and uh, 900 plus government agencies 3400 plus educational institutions they have non-profit organizations they have uh, medical organizations or med medical institutes uh, the MNCs the startups the medium scale companies so uh, of that 1 million active customers if you see customers are from different business backgrounds like uh, like you see the government agencies educational non-profit uh, health institutes your non uh, your uh, multinational companies startups medium scale right so uh, the, the the customers are from different business backgrounds which is exactly what AWS is targeting it's not it is not designed or it is not for a single uh, type of business uh, entities it's for everybody and the adaptation clearly shows that everybody can adopt to it right so they have like I said they have the data centers in in 16 different countries they call it as regions uh, they have 42 availability zones which are nothing but the data centers uh, and they have 40 sorry 54 edge locations which are uh, the content delivery networks so there is a, a edge location in every major cities of all the countries so in India we have three edge locations uh, one is in Delhi Mumbai and Chennai three edge locations so we will talk in detail about these regions availability zones and edge locations but to introduce you what exactly AWS AWS is a public uh, cloud hosting company right the public cloud services uh, providing company uh, they have customers in 190 countries and uh, the customers from different business backgrounds as you see uh, and uh, they they have the data centers spread across 16 regions 
uh, 42 availability zones and 54 edge locations right uh, this is it and they have services falling into different categories infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service storage as a service uh, database as a service so different categories and each of these categories you have different services for example database as a service in database as a service you have different database engines provided as a service for example Microsoft SQL or MySQL uh, and and PostgreSQL right so these are into RDS relational database uh, uh, category so there are different database engines similarly if I go to the NoSQL category you have different uh, services like uh, uh, DynamoDB or MongoDB or, or different other databases in that category the big data yes they have Redshift analytics uh, they have different services so uh, different areas and different services are available in Amazon cloud okay so we gonna uh, cover most of them part of the solution architect and system operations administrator training and to talk about the history of Amazon web services 2002 was a year uh, that web services Amazon web services was born and then uh, Benjamin and Chris presented the vision of Amazon uh, web services uh, the vision of Amazon web services to the entire world uh, on a public stage uh, talking about what are their plans what is the vision what services are they targeting uh, so and so in the year of 2003 you can imagine that 2002 was a year and we are in 2017 so it's close to 15 years that they have been working they have been developing uh, the products right so maybe in the last two years or three years so we started seeing the web services adaptation in the IT and we started learning it but it was developed it was started I mean the development was started 15 years back that's the reason that Amazon is leading the market today over the other cloud providers like Oracle or uh, or Microsoft right or OpenStack the other if you if you compare the other uh, 12 or 13 competitors in IT those who are into the public uh, cloud uh, service providers so Amazon is leading the market Amazon is uh, uh, is the the first priority to the customers because they have rich set of features a uh, huge list of uh, services right that is just because they started the development in the year of 2002 and Microsoft realized it very late uh, and the other cloud providers also realized it very late that's the reason and it's not just people may be thinking like which cloud should be adopted should I get trying on Microsoft Cloud OpenStack AWS uh, VMware which is the right one for me to, to get trying on well uh, I was thinking personally I was thinking uh, Microsoft may beat Amazon because Microsoft have got uh, you know almost all products in their portfolio right um, starting from the Microsoft Office until uh, the big data or uh, the collaboration content collaboration services like SharePoint mailing services like exchange uh, web services like IAS or whatnot right they have all services in their uh, portfolio so they can offer the services at a cheaper price because they don't have to uh, consider the licensing price but if you go for web services Amazon web services uh, Amazon have to pay for the software licenses to Microsoft or software licenses to somebody else uh, whose services are uh, are they gonna host so the price I was thinking the price is going to be a key uh, so Microsoft definitely can offer it at a cheaper price but Amazon made a smart move of announcing the official partner partnering with VMware so in the next couple of months or in the coming year we may see a lot of new features and enhancements to the cloud uh, come uh, with the with the partnering of um, of VMware so we all know that VMware is into the product ma product making uh, they are the market leading company into the data center virtualization cloud disaster recovery network virtualization areas but they are not into services VMware never says that we have a data center we gonna provide you uh, the virtual machines or whatever over the cloud they are not into it they are completely into the product development so now the Amazon into the services VMware into the product development uh, announced the official partnering so that we definitely gonna see uh, more and more features which is exactly what the industry need today 
okay so and uh, in the year of 2004 uh, the first Amazon service launched for public usage uh, it was SQS simple queue service so what is this how will it help the applications uh, it's something that we're going to discuss later point of time but it was announced in the year of 2004 and in the year of 2007 uh, Amazon claimed that they have 1 lakh 80 thousand dollars uh, signed up because initially it was just the platform as a service that they've announced and in the same year they have EC2 services also announced okay and in the year of 2010 um, uh, the, the amazon.com and uh, uh, the AWS services right the the e-commerce and the retail market uh, is separated as two different uh, entities and in the year of 2011 uh, there was a major outage in the, that was a very first outage and it was a major outage in fact a portion of the EBS volume was stuck and it was it was I mean we were not able to do uh, either read or write operations onto it and it was actually the outage was for two days it took them two days to restore the services fully and that was the very first outage and in the year of 2012 from then the series of outages happened in different areas of the data center uh, Uh, sorry yeah uh, so later in the year of 2012 several websites that rely on web uh, Amazon web services taken offline due to uh, a severe storm it's it's actually a natural uh, thing that has happened uh, North Virginia is one of their oldest or for that matter it is a first data center and uh, uh, it's it's a first data center and uh, uh, the largest data center too okay so uh, the storm hit their largest data center resulting in which there were many websites that were taken offline and the services was restored later point of time and uh, uh, to take this particular example North Virginia data center was hit by a, a natural disaster so in that time the web services have to be taken offline uh, but it is also the customers responsibility uh, what to do in such situation right how to plan your uh, application continuity or your business continuity well you might have definitely deployed one more server in a different region altogether uh, and then you maybe do a load balancing in between if one uh, data center hits uh, hit by any kind of outage that should not impact your application continuity and that's a planning that you do but if you have a single data center yes for any reason there is a possibility or probability that that particular data center may go down okay and then uh, in, the, in the same year that is 2012 another ma major outages have uh, uh, occurred and that was actually affected the major websites and uh, major services that are hosted by uh, reddit or foursquare you know right these companies uh, reddit is a mobile making company or, or these right that was actually a memory leak bug again so this memory leak bug again is is not specific to amazon uh, this is across the industry right this is across the industry uh, so but still uh, that is also covered in the outages list here so that you know what has happened uh, in the past and in the same year 2012 there was another outage uh, that that was uh, causing service interruption to Netflix you all know what is on Netflix right so that was actually uh, an issue in the ELB elastic load balancer so uh, it took them it, it did not uh, you know it, it did not cause much of a it, it did not take much of a time to restore the services it was just a couple of hours of uh, service outage but still uh, Netflix being uh, uh, a big video streaming application uh, that was I mean the load balancer was not able to distribute the load because of uh, the unexpected load onto it from then what Amazon started saying is uh, you need to apprise them I mean you need to tell them in advance if your application is expected to have uh, a hit level right the number of hits or the throughput levels cross a certain amount of uh, you know data throughput so I mean I don't remember the the amount of data throughput but yes from then Amazon have mandate you saying if your uh, your your application 
is likely to surf or if it is expecting Uh, more number of I mean more number of uh, users hitting your website or more amount of data is being transmitted You need to tell them in advance so that they make uh, separate arrangements in the background Because the regular ELBs or the other services or the shared services as we all know in the cloud But if one customer is taking the majority chunk of it that is likely to hit uh, I mean that is likely to do the service interruption for the other customers. That's the reason uh, you know they they've uh, uh, they have made separate arrangements and you have to tell them in advance if your application is uh, is to deliver you know video a high video streaming content like Netflix uh, that is likely to disturb the other customers on the cloud so you better tell them in advance about your application behavior and in the same year uh, AWS hosted its first customer event in Las Vegas So these customer events are like uh, uh, like uh, the events that everybody is doing today, like like the VMware, uh, VM World, or the Oracle World, or the ServiceNow, right? I mean, every even Microsoft does it. It's like engaging the customers uh, or the partners and announcing the new features, kind of thing, uh, or the enhancements that they have done, or any price reductions. So once in a year from then they started doing it um, and of course every year it happens in the month of December okay uh, and in the year of 2013 they have started uh, doing the certification program okay the solution architect system operations administrator associate level professional level DevOps so all these certifications were introduced in the year of 2013 and in the year of 2015 uh, they have announced their profit levels etc uh, uh, etc et but but to tell you that is to let the customers or the world know that how the Amazon uh, web services are doing but of course we are not bothered much about the income levels or of Amazon in the same year um, the Gartner report says Amazon is actually uh, doing very good and their adaptation levels are 10 times uh, more uh, than the other competitors in the industry okay in the public cloud uh, services area there are 14 other providers 14 other competitors and today it is 18 I believe so Amazon uh, is Amazon adaptation is 10 times more than the others for what reason well uh, I just told you right they they've started developing the products in the year of 2002 uh, so uh, the number of services that they offer uh, and the ease of administration the security in the other area the other uh, features are definitely very much developed and available in Amazon while the same set of features are not available uh, in the other uh, you know in Anna in, in the other providers portfolio uh, and in 2015 right Amazon uh, again announced that uh, the numbers that I've discussed in the earlier slide that, that 1.5 uh, million customers or uh, the services being op opted in 190 countries uh, those are from different business uh, backgrounds right so that was the result that was announced in the year of 2015 and in the year of 2016 uh, Jesse was named as CEO of uh, the AWS division the reason that you see AWS that is Amazon Web Services because uh, when they named it in the, in the year of 2002 there was nothing like uh, there is nothing called cloud computing right they thought as the services are being delivered over the internet which is the web so they thought of calling it as web services that's uh, the reason behind uh, having the name of uh, Amazon web services that is AWS okay so with that let's jump on to the certification path uh, like you see on the screen there are two levels of certifications at this point of time one is uh, the associate level the other is a professional level so at this point of time the professional level is being the topmost category associate level is being the entry level so somebody to be a professional level guy you must have to take the associate level certification however the training is not mandatory for any of these certifications even without training you can go there and you can give your certification program okay so 
professional level uh, is something like I said you you just cannot skip these and and go to professional level you must be uh, associate level certified okay so for you to take associate level certification you either uh, do a self preparation or take the official training program that is conducted by Amazon um, like you have uh, uh, technical essentials of web services or uh, your solution or tech certification program which is a three day training or the system operations administration training program which is a three days program uh, right you can take the official training programs which will cost you 65,000 rupees each of each of those trainings the solution or tech alone will cost you 65,000 uh, system operations administrator alone will cost you 65,000 uh, technical essentials will cost you some something close to 25,000 rupees and uh, I mean sorry or you can also take training from the freelancers like me or you can also do a self preparation and, and you can go for the certification so one thing that I would like to highlight here is our training program is definitely uh, two to three times better than the official trainings that you do okay I bet it is I mean I can give you on in written our training program is two to three times better than the official training programs because uh, I normally the the corporate trainings or the official training partners will engage me to deliver the same uh, official trainings so I also go on official trainings to deliver it in two days or three days so we don't focus anything on practical we will be given with the set of slides we just have to run through them we don't we never go beyond uh, the topic and explain them or nor go and tell uh, show them the practicals how to do it is just uh, eight hours a day three days in a row uh, two hours will be break so it's six days sorry six hours a day it's three six uh, or 18 hours I say the training I mean even the 18 hours of training will not go straight and much nothing much of a, a helpful information that can be gained and solution architect system operations administrator technical essentials or three different trainings and you have to pay uh, three times here all three put together as a single training offering okay so after completing this particular training you can either go for the solution or tech associate or can go for system operations administrator associate level and from the certified developer 50% of the course content is covered because the same services fall into this category as well EC2 VPC S3 whatever the services that we discuss here in these two certification program 50% uh, of it falls into developer as well certified developer once you do either of the certifications or both the certifications you can take uh, the certified solution architect professional level certification or you can also go into uh, the DevOps the AWS certified DevOps again those who are looking for the DevOps I say uh, DevOps is not something exclusively available in available in AWS DevOps is uh, is not even a technology is not even a product it is actually uh, it is actually a culture it is actually a change in uh, delivering a project right the process uh, change of a process in delivering the project so uh, even without AWS in a traditional data center we have the concept of DevOps that is to automate things in different areas starting from the automation of the build and deployments continuous integration continuous delivery in each of these areas there are different tools or programming languages available like puppet chef ansible python right powershell so different programming languages or the tools available to automate the stuff so don't think devops is aws or aws is devops because of late i see uh, many people thinking that both are same no okay so uh, you can go to the official site uh, you just can say aws.amazon.com and certification uh, and you will get to see something like this uh, and you can see the blueprint of the solution architect and system operations administrator and the services that I listed in earlier console are same uh, what you will be what you will see in the blueprint official blueprint okay so now uh, how many questions will be there in the exam well uh, AWS did not mention how many questions will be there in the exam uh, I've seen 
I've, I mean, I listen to people. I've uh, listened to the experts in the community, in in the pa podcasts, or in the technical discussions in the forums, or I heard to the people who give the certification program that the questions are ranging from 50 to 60 uh, uh, randomly. Okay, if, when I sit for my certification, it was uh, 60 number of questions, and when I heard to my colleagues, they said 55, 50. So nowhere it is specified uh, that the static number of questions what is the number of questions that you're gonna get in the exam right and what is the pass percentage that is also not specified anywhere none of the official uh, documents or even the blueprints specify uh, the pass percentage so when I I heard I mean the same from the same discussions I heard uh, people failed with 65 percentage people pass with 60 percentage okay so it completely depends so I, I request you to target for 70 percentage uh, is something that I never heard somebody said I, I got 70 and I failed okay so prepare for that number of questions and the past percentage so how do I get uh, my certification clear well like I said you'll be provided with student manuals you'll be provided with the lab guide so we'll do the detailed labs here uh, and after doing all this, I'll also give you 500 dumb, 500 uh, questions of dumb file. You you follow them, um, and you still feel that you cannot do that. Uh, let me know. I can help you. You know, out of the box. I say, okay. And like I said, uh, the solution architect or system operations administrator certifications are delivering infrastructure as a service to the customers. Okay. So what is covered in the infrastructure as a service? Well, uh, this is something that I've already covered to the people who have attended my basics class. So, uh, but since we are hitting the very first module here, I would like to make it clear now again. So it includes the physical infrastructure. It includes your servers, server hardware, uh, networking, storage. Uh, so all physical infrastructure of your data center falls into it. On top of that, you have the virtualization layer as well because there is no cloud uh, without virtualization. So it could be Hyper-V, it could be VMware, ESX, ESXi, uh, Citrix Zen server, KVM server, uh, OVM server. It could be any of those hypervisors uh, and a management server. But yes, you also have the virtualization layer here. On top of the virtualization layer, you have a management layer. It's like um, the Hyper-V manager or the vCenter server. OVM manager uh, right so a management layer to handle many number of hypervisors to handle many number of uh, virtual machines in a single uh, console like a centralized management console right you have a management layer so this management layer apart from doing the centralized administration it can also be injected with uh, to, to different other softwares for example chargeback is a software right so your management layer can be integrated with the chargeback so what does it do well let's say you are in a data center you are in a company and there are four departments who need the servers your network team sorry your network team need a server your uh, uh, your HR team needs the server your payroll team need the server your development team needs the server your testing need, team needs that server so each of those teams need uh, the servers to host their own applications uh, well, when you provide those servers, you would like to charge them back, right? It, which is exactly the same happens in the cloud, right? I, I'm a customer. I How do Amazon knows that how many servers did I use and what period? Uh, otherwise, they cannot bill me, right? They cannot say uh, how many, how much do I have to charge him, okay? So let's say the mobile operating companies. How do they bill you end of the month if it is a postpaid connection? They must have a mechanism of tracking how many calls you made and each call is of what duration and is that a local call, ISD or STD? Is that uh, a call to a same operator or it is a, to a different operator's mobile? So based on different parameters, they will charge you. Similarly, here also, they must have a mechanism uh, to charge you back, right? How many servers did you use? What operating system was that? What configuration was that? And how long did you use? So to, based on this uh, tracking, they'll be able to charge you back. Right? They'll be able to charge you back. So 
So, so this chargeback is an application that must be integrated with your management layer and then the capacity management so with the help of capacity management because in the cloud they just cannot say hey if you need a server put a request today we will provision the servers uh, we will put a request to provision to buy the server hardware and we will configure them with uh, the hypervisor with the virtual machines templates all that and we'll made it available in next uh, 20 to 15 sorry 15 to 20 days or 30 days that's not something uh, you know the operating model of the cloud uh, it is on demand when you need it you should be able to take it you should be able to provision it so uh, for you to to do that kind of uh, for you to provide that kind of services you should be able to do the capacity management so there are capacity management tools that tells you uh, in next how many days uh, the current capacity will exhaust or how much uh, more capacity do you need to add in all the areas in networking in storage in in servers in database in all these areas and you also have the change management you just uh, should not do any changes in the cloud just because you wanted to or you wanted to test something out right the changes that you perform will be um, will go through uh, evaluation process called cab uh, change advice report there will be a group of people who will evaluate the change that you would like to perform and you need to defend it they will ask you many questions on why you wanted to do it uh, what will happen if when you do this change um, and when you do this change um, if, if something goes wrong how long do you need to restore the services so, so it's a different process uh, that the cab members will do uh, once you answer all the questions and once you have the implementation plan rollback plan uh, readily available with you that's when they approve it and that's when they you can do the change implementation and you also have the policy based resource allocation like uh, if you see the pre free tier when you go for free tier uh, if you see uh, the processor of the machine you will see AMD processor is given to you which is a cheap one right uh, but if you go for the premium which is a, a paid EC2 instance you will see the the compute capacity is something different it's a different category processor is given to you it's a different uh, storage given to you right so that is a policy based based on uh, the the level of service that you choose to uh, the similar I mean the, in the in the back end the respective services are provisioned for your server and the performance optimization lifecycle management so like I said these are all the different softwares those were injected to your management layer so that at a cloud level <coughs> so that at a cloud level when you deploy a server, uh, the chargeback, the capacity management, the policy-based resource allocation, uh, performance optimization, or the um, the security audits, right? All these things uh, will happen, and uh, you will you will give all these as a service uh, to your customers. And not just that, you also have a service catalog, right? Uh, because when a customer log into the portal, they should see what services are available. Now, when we log into AWS, uh, aws.amazon.com, you should know uh, how many services are available there, right? That's called the catalog. And the self-service portal. Well, uh, let's say the aws.amazon.com or console.aws.amazon.com. When you log into the portal you see the list of services are available which is called the catalog and those services can be provisioned using a self-service portal with the same console uh, if you would like to launch an ec2 instance there is a wizard that you need to follow and uh, uh, when you when you complete that wizard there will be ec2 instance uh, deployed for you that is a self-service portal so uh, as you all know the characteristics or the qualities of the cloud computing is the chargeback right uh, the broad network access, the self-service, on-demand, uh, rapid elasticity. So there are six qualities of the cloud computing. No matter uh, who is the provider, they must have all these six and they can also have more. But these six are mandatory. So as you see, to a data center, to a traditional data center, if you can inject those six qualities, then that will become uh, the cloud computing. And based on the in, the network access that you provide, it is called as private, public, uh, and hybrid cloud computing. If you if you inject all these components and you only allow uh, users from uh, from the LAN within your company, then it's called private cloud. 
if you allow the access over the internet to everybody it's called the public cloud if you have mix of it it's called the hybrid or if you have a community right the companies uh, form as a community and access is only allowed to those set of companies it's called a community cloud so what I the point that I'm trying to highlight here is to a traditional data center if you are able to inject those chargeback mechanism the capacity management the change management the life cycle management or the operations or the centralized administration identity and access management or the audit right all these characteristics together inject them to the to your data center and you you allow access to the internet right that's when it is called the public cloud which is exactly what Amazon is doing Amazon must also have a data center they must also have the servers database operating system networking and engineers like us to handle their data center and they are allowing us over the internet to access the services using a self-service portal uh, and uh, they also have a chargeback mechanism to track what services are you using and to what duration uh, and uh, the lifecycle management when you delete or when you terminate a server that will be deleted, deleted forever uh, and so on forth right so this is what the infrastructure as a service delivery model and to move on the elasticity okay so uh, as we are all talking about uh, the cloud computing the rapid elasticity and all that uh, our traditional data centers cannot uh, meet uh, the workloads like what you see on the screen for example uh, the very first one in the left hand side you see it's on and off the traditional data center cannot meet such kind of requirements let's say you have a server that need to be power on for two days off for one day and power on for another three days off for uh, one day right so this is a trend that the server is doing when the server is off here a day another day three days here uh, and five days it is on three days it is off uh, when it is off the server hardware that you procure uh, it's unnecessary investment right uh, so it is a if it is one server that's fine what if it is 10 servers uh, that are on and off at, at a random uh, timelines right so for those 10 servers it is waste of investment in the days when it is off in the days when it is off and let's say a fast growing environment for example initially you hosted an application called netflix which is a video streaming right so the netflix is slowly getting popular and uh, more number of users are adapting to it more number of users are adapting to it so as the demand is growing the amount of resources that are needed is also going high so if it is a, a classic traditional data center environment initially you hosted two servers and as the number of requests are going high two servers will not uh, sufficient will not be sufficient to uh, to meet up the demand so that's when you may choose to add more number of servers here but that is always in a reactive approach I mean that is always like you either end up doing over provisioning or uh, the under provisioning right? this is not an effective way of handling things or there is a variable peaks right uh, there is no uh, a prediction as such there is no prediction it's on a random basis it is just the utilization is going high coming down going high coming down in this scenario you certainly cannot uh, you know provision a static number of servers for example let's say you provision two servers and the two servers are static here it's it's the red line that you see sometimes there is uh, extra resources that are available sometimes uh, I mean there is it's it's like two servers are over provision sometimes it is under provision it's over provision under provision so even this kind of requirement your data centers cannot meet and predictable uh, workloads for example uh, entertainment sites that will be utilized uh, much during the weekends so weekend it goes high and in the weekdays it comes down here also you will not be able to meet uh, if it is a traditional data center because uh, during the weekend you certainly cannot add more number of servers to uh, to the service right you just cannot procure more number of servers only in the weekend 
add them to the service remove them on Monday evening add them back on the Friday evening that is not possible so in all these areas if it is a cloud uh, cloud like AWS and they have uh, something called auto scaling and they have something called EC2 and they have something called reusable components right so uh, there is always somebody who is looking at your application utilization your application demands and they will deploy the number of servers required always the number of servers required always for example if you need on Saturday Friday evening you need four servers and on Monday evening you just need two server so this is automatically taken care you don't have to go there add four servers remove two by Monday evening uh, that is all automated and the beauty is you only pay, pay for four servers uh, for Saturday Sunday and you only pay for two servers uh, during the weekdays right because pay as you go right that is the elastic computing so there is an elasticity you can scale up scale down uh, you know of your choice on demand and to talk about the regions and availability zones well like I said <coughs> like I said um, the AWS cloud infrastructure is built around regions and availability zones a region is a physical location in the world where we have multiple availability zones a region is a physical location in the world and in that physical location we have multiple availability zones a availability zone consists of one or more discrete data centers each with redundant power networking and connectivity housed in a separate facility the availability zones offer you ability to operate uh, production applications databases uh, with high availability fault tolerance scalable whatnot right so so I mean just to reiterate a region is a physical location on the globe for example Mumbai is a region Mumbai is a region availability zone is uh, it consists of one or more discrete data centers for example uh, Mumbai is a region in Mumbai we have two availability zones two availability zones each availability zone may have uh, it, it may have at least one uh, or more data centers as we don't know how many data centers are there let's consider uh, availability zone as a data center so in Mumbai we have two availability zones that is two data centers so at this point of time uh, I mean numbers that you see here are kind of outdated there are 42 availability zones and 16 regions so on the globe on the globe there are 16 different uh, regions so uh, data centers are hosted in 16 different countries and and in 16 different countries there are 42 availability zones I say 42 data centers okay and uh, there is something called edge location uh, the edge locations are located in major cities of every country like I said in India uh, we have uh, Delhi Mumbai and uh, Chennai so who if somebody is trying to access Amazon data center resources anywhere from India uh, the request will be redirected to the nearest edge location for example if I am I am sitting in Hyderabad if I am trying to access the Amazon services Amazon web services from Hyderabad my request will be routed to the Chennai edge location so from Chennai edge location to Amazon data centers they have uh, very fast fiber op dedicated fiber optic connectivity so that way uh, content is delivered on a very fast very fast network uh, so it, it just accelerates the performance right it is called the edge location is also called as CDN content delivery network okay so uh, regions availability zones and edge locations region is a physical location on the globe uh, for example Mumbai availability zone is a data center so every region will at least have two availability zones every region will at least have two availability zones okay so because there is no region with one availability zone there is no region with one availability zone every single region 
uh, must have at least two availability zones because um, let's say availability zone A and B if A fails uh, you can you can plan your application availability immediately uh, at, at B if the entire region goes down that's when you have to plan for uh, the cross region I mean uh, application continuity at a different region altogether okay so the, the point that I'm trying to highlight here is you knowing the regions and availability zones content delivery network you can plan your application deployment on the cloud effectively a region is a physical location availability zone is a data center so every single region will at least have two data centers and like I said North Virginia is being the largest uh, data centers they have five availability zones in that particular region five availability zones and edge location is a content delivery network uh, which is a very fast dedicated fiber op optic network connectivity between the edge location and the Amazon data center and this is exactly how it looks like uh, let me take this link and and show you I just open that URL here and you see the global infrastructure uh, Amazon cloud operates 42 availability zones 16 regions okay so there are with five more availability zones and two more regions coming online through the next year so this is something for next year uh, and you, you, you can understand that they they keep developing their I mean they keep expanding their data centers they keep expanding their data centers they keep expanding the global presence so you can see this uh, numbers that you see here are uh, the region and the numbers are the availability zones you cannot see any number with one or less than two right you see at least two uh, and more than two it's two three five is what you see so in that available in that region there are three availability uh, zones in here there are two availability zones here five availability zones uh, three availability zones right you see here in India uh, there are two availability zones right so that's the global uh, infrastructure you can see uh, in what country in what city you have the availability zones and regions available in North America in North America uh, this is the status similarly if I just come down uh, South America that is a status and Europe you can see and Asia Pacific so uh, the region wise you can see uh, the breakup the number of regions and availability zones that you have and when it was launched the dates etc and apart from this if you also would like to see if you'd like to see what the edge locations list you can see that as well so Amazon edge network locations um, in India you have Chennai uh, you have Mumbai and you have uh, New Delhi you see you have Mumbai Delhi and Chennai these are the three locations where you have the edge locations okay similarly you have two in Singapore uh, three in um, Korea right so this is in Asia Pacific similarly you can see Middle East or Europe Africa, Africa countries and you can see South America uh, in what all places you have the edge location right so I would request you to go through that link and read through so that you'll gain more knowledge uh, around the global infrastructure and the other thing is of uh, the 16 regions and 42 availability zones you can decide where can you host your application right there is um, nobody else can tell you or nobody else can mandate that you should only host your server and so-and-so region so-and-so availability zone 
it is completely of your choice which region and which availability zone should you host your servers and how uh, uh, the failure or, or how uh, the clustering and all that things are uh, are implemented the load balancing etc including your database so as we progress in the training I mean in the next uh, classes you will get to know that uh, uh, how to plan your uh, web server availability and your database availability how to do the failover fail back and all that but yes uh, it is definitely with the customers like where to put your application and and your databases as you see on the screen uh, this is of the Amazon data center look like it's called Amazon uh, Paradix and if it is a Microsoft Azure you see it is IT pack okay so if you remember the definition that I said for uh, the availability zone uh, availability zone can have one or more discrete data centers with redundant power connectivity storage packed in a separate container so normally we call it as container but it is called as paradox uh, it is called as IT pack but this is how the data center looks like it can be moved it can be uh, I mean if you need more capacity to be added you just bring one more container put the servers and everything into it and that's all it is okay uh, and then the physical access and security certifications uh, that Amazon has uh, yeah so before I proceed I just would like to stop it here for today because I know it is a very first class and you may be uh, you may or may not be able to take it it's too much I just stop here and tomorrow we will go over the remaining slides here and uh, I will also show you how to create a free account and how to manage uh, the console uh, and how to navigate through the console uh, and all that so you all still can attend for tomorrow it's it's again a free class um, those who did not pay it, you still can attend for tomorrow and even if you have any of your friends looking for it uh, you can extend the invitation and from the following day I'll be sharing a new invitation uh, so this is it it's, it's open if you guys have any questions you can ask Any any questions guys? Hello? Yes Ravi. Hello? Yes Ravi. Uh, very good. Uh, actually I have a doubt one in DevOps side. Mm -hmm. So we need to uh, make in of our DevOps uh, tools. Uh, uh. Sorry come again. We need to? Uh, sorry, we need to build infra for uh, DevOps tools. Infra means server. Or I mean, see, when I say DevOps again, um, it's it's it mix of lot of things. So DevOps is basically to automate uh, different areas of your IT. Okay, so if you wanted to okay. do, if you wanted to automate the build and deployment of the servers, initial build and deployment, yes, okay. it needs. There are different options you have you you go for cloud formation or you can go for uh, puppet you can go for chuff or you can go for ansible you can go for python scripts so there are different options you have so it depends upon which option you choose if you choose puppet yes you need to have a server where the puppet is installed um, and uh, the dns servers etc etc it's a different setup altogether if you want the cloud formation well you don't, you don't need any infrastructure to be set up the cloud formation is available as a service from Amazon you just have to go there write your script and that that should deploy your servers so it depends on on the type of uh, uh, tool I mean the tool or the programming language that you choose to implement your DevOps okay so all, all models uh, by default coming from uh, tools right all yeah. models means Configuration management tools uh, like yeah. so different options we have. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Feel free to ask me the question. No matter it is relevant to the topic that we have discussed, it could be in general. Uh, feel free 
uh, those who do not have the questions you feel free to quit I will see you tomorrow the same time yes uh, Akash you can install puppet on AWS instance any other questions is mandatory scripting for Amazon web services scripting <laughs> it's 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 a question back to you I mean it's it's all how you wanted to deal with if you wanted to automate things you script it or if you want you are happy doing it manually you let it go mostly the companies are doing automating today right? um, adopting okay. to the cloud is the first stage uh, okay. uh, so that stage is already covered that's already you know done the next thing is people are automating it okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. so Venkat is asking how is the current market in in India well <laughs> it's it's like it's the same that you see uh, in US right it's it's a global market right so I don't say it is too good or it's too bad it's average they are looking for really uh, techie guys um, I don't say there are no opportunities there are opportunities but you're uh, skilled enough then yes you will will be able to do it so so Chris Sai says I am from Linux background do this help me what prerequisites for this AWS well um, this program is especially for the server admins okay uh, so and it is delivery of infrastructure as a service right so those who already know some uh, bit of knowledge and experience into to the server administration yes you are an ideal con uh, candidate to start with the AWS training and since you are into Linux it is an added advantage for you your your bash scripts uh, or any other uh, uh, you know automation things or administration skills that you have learned so far will definitely be used uh, in Amazon cloud as well Any other questions? No? Okay guys, uh, thank you for joining me today. I'll see you tomorrow, the same time, 6.15. Request you all to join on time.